Hey everyone, it's time to talk about the new jeans dealer called Codex. I am super excited. Hey everyone, welcome to another Codex review. As always, my name is Jay, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the new jean sealer called Codex that is, um, jean sealer called Codex that is out for pre order this weekend. Um, of course, I'm filming it just slightly ahead of time, but uh, by the time this video is up, it'll be up on the Games Workshop website. So, a lot of cool stuff there. So, in this video, I'm going to go over my whole review of the Codex, at least my first part of it. Maybe I'll go over anything I missed in the next video, as well as maybe stratagems and stuff. But uh, in this video, I want to create the discussion about maybe what rules I got wrong, what rules I missed, what do you think about the Codex, and I'll make another video afterwards as well. So, my overall thoughts on the Codex are, it's a very cool Codex. It's very, I think it's it's very interesting. They added a lot of flavor to the Gene Sealer Cult's army. A lot of new models, a lot of new rules. It's going to be a lot of fun. And the models look amazing. It's, it's probably the coolest looking army that I've seen in a long time, and uh, I'm excited. I'm, I can't wait to see it on the tabletop, frankly. That being said, is this a complete game changer of a codex? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to see... I, I'm, kind of a, I'm kind of curious of how this ends up in the competitive environment. It is a very uh, complex codex. This is not a starter army for if you're brand new to 40k. It does take a lot of strategy to play this army effectively, I believe, um, for, for many reasons. And we'll go over most of them in this video today. Um, but this is not an easy, or it's not one of the easier point-and-click armies that you can just put on the table and win a game. You're going to actually have to play a lot of strategy and play intelligently to win with this army. Um, for those who don't know, Gene Sealer Cults is kind of a cool combination of Tyranids, primarily, of course, Gene Sealers, and Astra Militarum, so Imperial Guard. And so the Codex is really comprised of a lot of really hard hitting um, close combat units that are really glass hammers. I mean, these units are going to die very easily when being targeted, so you have to get them to close combat. Of course, some of their special rules will enable that, but it's still going to be a little bit of difficulty. The base troops are really squishy, kind of cool Imperial Guardsmen, basically. You know, put it down there. Um, they aren't survivable at all. Yeah, you're frankly just going to, you know, use them to grab objectives and shoot some stuff lightly. Um, and then the heavy support choice and some of the fast attack is really where the strength of the shooting comes into play because this is all the Astra Militarum side of the Codex. And uh, it's really hard hitting. Like you can take Lehman Russes, for example. You still can't take them in squadrons. I was really hoping you could take them in squadrons like in Astra Militarum. You can't for Gene Sealer Cults. So you have to figure out and build your army accordingly to figure that out to maximize those. But you still have access to, you know... Um, some heavy hitting tanks, so the Lehman Russes, the Goliaths, you know, um, the Rock Grinder, as I'm calling, uh, you know, as a good shooting. You can take a heavy weapons team like you can for Astro Malterum. So there's plenty of shooting. So, as I said, there's two parts to the army the assault and the shooting. The assault is really good in assault, but it will die to shooting. And then the shooting is actually really good in shooting, but you gotta protect it. So, I feel that if you're up against an army that is like a leaf blower list, this still the army will have some issues because I it would just simply leaf blow all the assaulty guys the second that they see them, and then uh, outgun the Astro Militarum side. I really do think that the new orcs can outgun this codex. Um, I'm still thinking it's a great codex, but I think that my list that I'm building for my orc army in the competitive scene. Um, could probably deal with Gene Sealer Cults relatively easy because most of these models will never get into Assault. Um, we'd see. But I think it's a good codex. And I think, as I said, it just takes a, a really good general to bring this codex to life. It's still, it can be competitive. It's just going to be tactical. So, of course, a uh, few things about this codex, of course. Let's start off with. Um, there's some new additions to the Codex, a lot of new models. They've tweaked one of the squad names. Um, it used to be they used to have two types of Neophyte hybrids, 
One of them basically has their own models. The other ones were the Astro Militarum models with different heads. You just replace the heads, make them genes here called heads, and it was the new, the other Neophyte squad, the one that would have a heavy weapons team. That is now called um, Brood Brothers, I believe they're called. Let me just pull up their, their name. So now there's three choices for troops. Uh, yeah, Brood Brothers Infantry Squad is what they're called. And uh, so that's the difference. A lot of new models, some new bikes, tons of new elites, some new HQs, tons of choices added to this codex. It's really fleshed out, a lot of cool new rules. New psychic powers. Um, they switch, they, you know, they, they change cult ambush to make it really interesting. And we'll be going over that in a moment. So a few things. So let's go over the things. So the cult, all genius cultists belong to a cult and there's certain different types of cults. We'll go over those rules in a moment, but, um, a faithful group of followers that can trace their bloodline back to a single patriarch. If a gene seer cult data sheet does not specify which cult it is drawn from, it will have the cult keyword. When you include such a unit, you just replace that cult keyword with whatever cult you're choosing. Uh, and that's pretty simple. So abilities. The following abilities are common to several gene seer cult models. And we'll go over both the rules and, and most of the models have these rules. First one's called Unquestioning Loyalty. And I really like it. Each time you fail a saving throw for a cult character model, and each time a cult character model suffers a mortal wound, before inflicting damage, check to see if it is wholly within, sorry, it is within, not wholly, it is within three inches of any friendly cult or brood brothers models, units with this ability. If it is, you can select one of those units and roll a d6 on a four up. You do not inflict any damage to the character, but one model in the selected unit is slain. Otherwise, the character suffers damage as normal. That's huge. So once again, let's say they hit your Patriarch, which is the equivalent of a Broodlord, with a Laz Cannon. You fail your Invulnerable save, and they roll damage, right? It could be up to six damage on your Broodlord slash Patriarch. Instead, if they're within three inches of a, of a normal guy, you can roll a dice on a four-up. The normal guy is just slain, which is amazing, right? 99% of the time, the model that will be slain will die anyway to a last cannon shot. Doesn't matter, and it's a lot less important than your character. So that's a very cool way of doing... Um, it's the old uh, Lookout Sir, basically, that used to be available in previous editions of the game. Very cool. Also called Ambush. This is where a lot of the tactical precision of this codex comes into play. Tactical... As I said, tactical precision. Cult Ambush. During deployment, you can set up a unit in ambush instead of on the battlefield. If this unit is an infantry or biker unit, it can either set up in ambush or underground instead of on the battlefield. When your unit is set up underground, it can emerge at the end of any of your movement phases, set up wholly anywhere, uh, sorry, set it up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than 9 inches away from any models. So the normal deep strike rules that apply to all the other codices, not first turn, otherwise it's in their deployment zone, blah blah blah. When you set up a unit in ambush, place one objective marker anywhere, so one ambush marker, sorry, anywhere on the battlefield that is wholly within your deployment zone. You will need one ambush marker for each unit that will deploy in this way. And so this codex literally comes with, you'll see them when you buy the codex, comes with like 28 object, so ambush markers, and a ruler, but ambush markers, cool. So as you can see, you place one down for each squad that you're placing in ambush. And transports in ambush, um, sorry, if you set up a uh, transport in ambush, you must still tell your opponent what units are embarked in it, but do not separate the squad, you just put one you know, down for the whole squad. Ambush markers are not units and cannot be targeted, attacked, or destroyed. When measuring to or from ambush markers, measure from the center. If you are playing a mission that uses concealed deployment, the concealed deployment rule only applies to units that do not have the cult ambush ability. If you are playing a mission that uses sentries, sentry models cannot be set up in ambush, and if even if they have the cult ambush ability. So revealing ambush markers, once again, if you have the first turn, you must reveal all your ambush markers at the start of your movement phase, one at a time before moving any units. Each time you reveal an ambush marker, select one unit from your army that you set up in ambush, and then set up one model from the unit within one inch of the ambush marker. 
Then remove the marker before setting up the rest of the models wholly within six inches of the first model, wholly within your deployment zone, and more than nine inches away from any enemy models. Any, model, any models that cannot be placed are destroyed. If it is your turn, that unit can still move and shoot normally during the, the turn it is set up. But if it is a transport unit, units that disembark from it cannot be set up with, within nine inches of any enemy models. Note that even though such units have arrived as reinforcements this turn, unless they actually move during this phase, they do not count as having moved in their movement phase for any rule of purposes such as shooting heavy weapons. That's huge. If your opponent is first turn, then none of the, their units can be set up or end a move within nine inches of an objective marker, sorry, an ambush marker. So that way, the biggest problem with this codex is obviously if you had a very fast opponent that could deep strike in, they could just place all their models in your deployment zone. You can't place them based on the rules and they all get destroyed and you lose the game. Uh, that is not the case because you cannot finish your movement within nine inches um, of an ambush marker. At the end of your opponent's first movement phase, after they have set up all their units from reinforcements, if any, reveal all your ambush markers as described above before continuing with this turn. So that is ambush, um, that's the cult ambush ability in a nutshell. So what this means is you will basically always be able to counter uh, deploy your army to your opponents. Even if your opponent goes second, right? You basically can place down your entire army that has the ambush ability in ambush, or you want they can deep strike. And after your opponent places down their army, you can set up your army however you wish, just you know, providing that they, they line up with the ambush markers. So regardless of your opponent goes first or second, you will always have the tactical advantage of being able to counter deploy to your opponent. If you're known, you know, you can really stack your army so that you can avoid assault with certain models and set them up. Uh, you can set up some counter assault models if you want, if your opponent's very fast, or if you're worried that your opponent's gonna destroy one of your vehicles, set them up in, in an area that they, they can't get to. Very cool stuff with this army. Once again, adds to the difficulty of how you have to be very precise with this army. That's it. So that's the, um, the two new special rules, but we'll also go through the cult abilities. So once again, there are um, by if your army's battleforged, you get insurrectionists, which is you know um, objective secured. And then there's cult creeds, which uh, all cult infantry and biker units with this ability gain a cult creed. So as long as every unit in the detachment is from the same cult. There's also brood brothers, which is the new type of squad, as I mentioned. Several gene Sir cults will also have the brood brothers keyword. Sorry, my neck's a little out of whack. These units can be included in Gene Sir Cult's attachment without preventing other units in this attachment from gaining the Cult Creed. Note, however, the Brood Brothers units do not themselves benefit from any Cult Creed. In addition, to represent Astro Militarum forces that have been subverted, you can include Astro Militarum units in your Gene Seal Cult units in the same matched play army, even though those units do not have any faction keywords in common. In such cases, ignore the Astro Militarum units when choosing your army's faction. If your army is battle forged, you can only include one Astro Militarum detachment, one in which every unit have, has the Astro Militarum keyword, in your army for each Gene Zero Cult's detachment in your army. You cannot include Astro Militarum names characters in these detachments, and these detachments cannot be specialist detachments. I wonder if that includes, like, um, what is a specialist detachment? I wonder if that includes, like, super heavies. I don't know. These Astro Militarum detachments, leave, uh, leave I, I'm asking your opinion on that. So what do you think? You can't bring a super heavy detachment, for example? Is that a specialist detachment? Um, these Astro Militarum detachments are then known as Brood Brothers detachments, and every word is regiment or mil Astro Militarum tem Tempestist. Keyword must be replaced with the instances as Brood Brothers. Cool. Brood Brothers detachments do not gain any of the detachment abilities listed in Codex Astro Militarum. And... They increase their leadership characters by one, and they gain the unquestioning loyalty ability. Cool. Units in Brood Brothers detachments do not gain the Cold Ambush ability. Your warlord cannot be it from a Brood Brothers detachment, and you cannot give a, any relics to Brood Brothers characters. In addition, the command benefits of all Brood Brothers detachments included in your army in this way are halved. Cool. All right. Interesting stuff. 
So cult creeds. Here are the different cult creeds that you can include in your army. There's cult of the, the four-armed emperor, which is until the end of the first battle round, add one to advance and charge rolls made for units with his cult creed. Starting from the second round, battle round, if a unit with his cult creed is set up on the battlefield, then until the end of the turn, add one to advance and charge rolls made by that unit. The, that would be really good for salty parts, gene sealers, you know, aberrants. They're, they're really cool. The Pauper princess, Princes, um, you can add you can reroll hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by a unit with cult creed in a turn that the, in which they made a charge move, was charged, or performed a heroic intervention. That's huge. Gene Stealers with rerolling hit is pretty nasty. The Hive Cult Disciplined Militants. Uh, if a unit with his cult creed fails a morale test, have the number of models that flee rounding up. In addition, units with his cult creed can still shoot in a turn that they fell back, and even if they do so, they must... Sorry, but if they do so, you must subtract one from their hit rolls in the shooting phase of that turn. There's the bladed cog. All models with this cult creed have a six plus invulnerable save. Models with this cult creed that already have an invulnerable save instead improve their invulnerable save by one. So you'd have four up invulnerable gene stealers. Cool. This would make aberrants and, uh, you know, all the, uh, what are they called? Aberrants? I'm going to screw up the names of these things. They're harder. Yeah, aberrants and like the, the makes them much harder to kill. Six was normal save. In addition, infantry models of this cult creed do not suffer the penalty for their hit rolls for moving and shooting heavy weapons. Once again, a huge advantage for this army. The Rusted Claw. When making saving throws, excluding invulnerable saving throws, for a model with this cult creed, add one to the result if the weapon being used to make the attack has an armor penetration value of zero or negative one. In addition, biker models with this cult creed do not suffer the penalty to, for their hit rolls, for moving and shooting heavy weapons, or for advancing and shooting assault weapons. Cool. And finally, the Twisted Helix. Add one of the strength characteristic of models with this cult creed. Cool. That helps everyone. In addition, add two to advance rolls for units with this cult creed. Once again, huge. So great for gene stores too. A lot of these ones work for most of the assault models of the army. And some of the, heavy, the, the shooting as well. So that's good stuff there. So let's get to uh, the models in this, in this, uh, yeah, let's get to the, uh, the actual army, the points, and the models. Let's do this. Oh, kick the camera. Let's move it back over. This is going to be a long video, I'm guessing, but that's okay. So we'll go over all the models first. Uh, up first is the Patriarch. The Patriarch is basically the equivalent of a brood lord. Um, movement, 8 inches, weapon skill 2 up, plus skill 5 up, you can't shoot anything anyway. Strength 6, toughness 5, wound, 6 wounds, 6 attacks, leadership 10, 4 up save, and it is basically 125 points. Um, it is a single model armed with re monster training claws, and, must, and it may be accompanied by up to 2 familiars. Uh, rending, monster training claws are strength user AP-3, D, D3, but any 6 plus to wound is AP-6, uh, 3 damage. It has the cult ambush rule, of course, because it can't. It's not going to take bullets for its fellow character. Uh, brood telepathy. So it obviously doesn't have the unquestioning loyalty. That's what I was referring to. Brood telepathy. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made by cult gene seal units with uh, in the fight phase while they're in six, within six inches of the uh, patriarch. Living idol. Cult and brood lord brother units automatically pass morale tests while they're within six inches of any friendly cult patriarch models. Has a five open vulnerable save. Can charge even if, if it advanced. And if you bring familiars with it, they can lend their psychic powers to it, basically. Uh, it can attempt to manifest one psychic power in each friendly and deny um, one psychic power each turn. And it'll smite and two psychic powers from the brood mind discipline. Up next, we have the Magus, or Magus. Uh, Magus is, let's see here, 80 points. Plus possible war gear, which I don't think adds up to anything. Um, it is movement 6 inches, weapon skill 3 up, bliss skill 3 up, strength 3, toughness 3, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8, 5 up save. Not an invulnerable save. Nope. Um, it has an auto pistol, a cultist knife, and a force staff. It can be accompanied by up to 2 familiars. Knows 1 psychic power, can deny 1 psychic power. Knows cult ambush, unquestioning loyalty, spiritual leader, each cult unit within 6 inches of any friendly cult mag magus. Models at the start of the, your opponent's psychic phase can attempt to deny one psychic power that targets them during that phase as if they were themselves a psychic. And then familiars as well. So cool stuff there. Uh, the Primus. 
Now, Primus is 72 points. It is armed with a needle pistol, bone sword, toxin, injector claw, and blasting charges, so it might add more points. Movement 6 inches, weapon skill 2 up, ballistic skill 3 up, strength 4, toughness 3, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9, 5 up save. It does have, nope, it's not a 5 up and vulnerable save either. Uh, the toxin claw injector, injector claw, uh, is strength melee, strength user, sorry, AP minus 1, D1, and wounds on 2 up unless you're targeting vehicles. Each time you make a wound roll 6 up with this weapon, it hit is resulted AP minus 4. It has cult ambush, unquestioning loyalty. Cult Demagogue. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made by cult units in this fight phase while they're within six inches of any friendly prime, uh, premises. And the first time this model is set up on the battlefield, select one enemy unit on the battlefield. Reroll wound rolls of one for attacks made by friendly cult units that have the cult ambush ability while they're within six inches of this model when targeting that enemy unit. Cool. Can help you shoot some stuff down. And the next one is the Acolyte Icon Ward, which is basically just an Acolyte with a banner. I'm kind of surprised the Acolyte Icon Ward is not in the Elite section, like most of the banners, but that's okay. So it's a, it's an Acolyte, movement 6 inches, weapon skill, ballistic skill, 3 up, strength 4, toughness 3, 4 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8, 5 up save. And the Icon Ward is 53 points. I don't think the banner is... Let me see if the banner costs anything... Called Icon. Mm, yeah, it might be an extra 10 points. So it might be 63 points total for the because of the banner. Yeah. It has an auto pistol, rending claw. You can bring blasting charges, has cult ambush, unquestioning loyalty. A nexus of devotion, roll d6 for each time a cult infantry or biker model loses a wound while within six inches of the model. On a six up, that wound is lost. It's not lost, sorry. Sacred Cult Banner. You can reroll morale tests for friendly units that are within six inches of this model. Bestial Devotion. Reroll Bestial Vigor rolls of one for friendly cult aberrant models while they're within six inches of this model. That's huge. I'm going to go over that rule in just in the, in the next thing. The aberrant models basically have a feel no pain of five up, so you can reroll ones if they're within um, six inches of a banner. And next we have the Abominant. Now, the Abominant is actually probably my favorite HQ in this codex just because it looks really awesome. And it's going to be a really heavy hitter in close combat, as is the Patriarch. The Abominant is the character version of an Aberrant. And it is a... Let's see how many points it is. 105 points plus war gear. Movement 6 inches. 3 inch, uh, sorry, three up weapon skill, 6 up ballistic skill. Strength 6, toughness 5, 5 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8, 5 up save. And it's not a 5 up vulnerable save. It's just a 5 up save. So I'm saying you really got to keep your character safe. If your opponent has snipe, they're in big trouble. Um, it has a power sledgehammer and rending claw, which power sledgehammer strength times two, AP minus three, DD six. Um, subtract one from the hit rolls, but damage rolls of one or two made with this weapon count as three instead, so it'll do some serious damage. It has cult ambush, unquestioning loyalty, bestial vigor. Infl when inflicting damage on this model, reduce the damage characteristic of the attack by one to a minimum of one. In addition, roll a six, a D six. Each time this model is wound on a five up, that wound is not lost. Helps to keep it alive. Yeah. Regenerative flesh. Regenerative flesh at the start of each of your turns. This model regains D3 lost wounds. The chosen one. Each unmodified hit roll of six for attacks made in the fight phase by friendly cult aberrant units within six inches of this model. Score two hits instead of one. And it's also an aberrant, so counts for itself. Mind worm familiar. Subtract one from psychic tests taken from psychers that are within 12 inches of any any of any Enemy aberrants, I'm sorry, abominance, turn and psychers are not affected. Cool. Up next, we have one of the cool new HQs, the dude on a bike with a sniper rifle, who is the Jackal Alphys. Jackal Alphys is 70 points plus war gear. Yeah. Um, he's moving 14 inches because he's on a bike. Weapon skill 3 up, plus skill 2 up, three, strength 3, toughness 4, 5 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8, 5 up save. Has an auto pistol, a jackal sniper rifle, which is heavy one, 36 inch range, strength four, AP minus two, DD three. If the weapon you tar uh, you could target enemy characters, of course, even if they're the not, not the closest unit. If you roll a wound roll of six up with this weapon, it inflicts one mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. And blasting charges, which are grenades. Grenade D6, six inch range, strength three, AP nothing, D1. 
is called Ambush and Questioning Loyalty. Skilled Outriders subtract one from hit rolls for attacks that target this unit in the shooting phase. And Priority, priority Target Sighted. At the start of your shooting phase, select an enemy unit that is visible to and within 36 inches of this model. Until the end of the phase, add one to hit rolls for attacks made by friendly cult units, then target that enemy unit while they're within 6 inches of this model, or within 12 inches if they are friendly cult biker units. Any, an enemy unit can only be selected as the target of this ability once per phase, in case you have multiple. So that way you can't stack them. And that's it for the HQs. So tons of, you know, you have some choices. A couple heavy hitters, a sniper on a bike, and some to help you with, you know, psychic powers. It's cool stuff. And then the one with the, uh, the icon ward, so the one with the banner to help keep your guys in line and keep your guys to survive. Um, overall, it's cool. Other than the Patriarch, the other ones are a little squishy. If they can, if your opponent can reach them, they're in trouble. And if they can shoot them, they're in trouble. Five-up saves are across the board, um, except for the Patriarch, which you can get them up to like a four-up and vulnerable save depending on which cult you choose. So that's, that'd be easy to keep him alive, but, and obviously they do have, you know, unquestioning loyalty, so you can, you know, if you keep them around with um, other guys, they can take the wounds from them, but it's gonna be tough keeping them alive if your opponent has access to them, you know? They're pretty squishy. Um, the, now, now for troops, we have three choices. Now there used to only be two choices, really. Um, Acolyte Hybrids, Neophyte Hybrids, and the new Brood Brothers Infantry Squad name, which is the, it's the Astronaut Town with guys with different heads. Acolyte Hybrids are, I believe, seven points a model. Uh, yes, so seven points a model. For Acolyte Hybrids, Brood Brothers are four because they don't get as many rules. Uh, they don't get the cult rule. And Neophyte Hybrids are five points a model. So if you have an extra point, you get the rules, but the, the Brood Brothers have access to heavy weapons, which are pretty cool. Acolyte hybrids are seven points each, movement six inches, weapon skill, plus, uh, weapon skill three up, plus skill four up, strength four, toughness three, one wound, two attacks, leadership seven, five up, save. So they're squishy. Um, a unit contains four acolyte hybrids and one acolyte leader. It may take up to five additional acolyte hybrids, up to 10 additional acolyte hybrids, or up to 15 additional acolyte hybrids. Each model is armed with an auto pistol, cultist knife, rending claw, and blasting charges. But you can give you can upgrade a bunch of their weapons, you know, to uh, like a hand flamer or a cult icon. Uh, for every five models in the unit, up to two acolyte hybrids may replace their cultist knife with a, and a rending claw with a heavy rock drill, which is pretty awesome. Heavy rock drills are strength times two, AP minus three, D one, and you roll a D six if you do. Uh, you know, after the bearer has made all the attacks, roll D six for each model that has suffered damage from this weapon in this phase, but has not been destroyed. On a two up, that model being rolled suffers one mortal wound, and if that model is not destroyed. You can roll another d6. This time, it does a mortal wound on a th suffers a mortal wound on a three up. Keep going until it's either dead or you fail. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can get a bone sword. You have a couple other weapons. Uh, they have cult ambush, unquestioning loyalty, and cult icon. Reroll hit rolls of one for this unit's attacks in the fight phase when it contains a model with the cult icon. Uh, there are two units: gene seer cults, cult infantry, acolyte hybrids. Next, we have the Neophyte Hybrids. Now, the Neophyte Hybrids, as I mentioned, are five points each. They are movement six inches, weapon skill four up, ballistic skill four up, so not as good in close combat. Strength three, toughness three, one wound, one attack, leadership seven, five up save. Um, a unit contains nine Neophyte Hybrids and one Neophyte Leader, who has uh, an extra attack and plus one leadership. Include up to 10 Neophyte Hybrids. Each model is armed with an auto gun, an auto pistol and blasting charges. An auto gun is a 24 inch range, rapid fire one, strength three, AP nothing, D one. Uh, you can replace an auto gun with a shotgun. Any of them can. One neophyte can take a cult icon. Up to two neophytes may replace their auto gun with a special weapons list item. A neophyte leader may replace their auto gun and an auto pistol with one of the pistols lists and one of the melee weapons. Up to two neophyte hybrids may replace their auto gun with one of the, the heavy mining weapons list. They have cult ambush. Unquestioning loyalty, cult icon, once again, reroll. Hit rolls a one in the fight phase if there's an icon. So cool stuff. Then up next, we have the final one, the Brood Brothers. As I mentioned, they're basically the Astro Militarum squad. Um, same set line as the, um, as the Neophytes. Yeah. Um, as I said, they have las guns. Yes, they have las guns instead of auto guns. And you can like include like heavy weapons in their army, in their squads. Um, 
yeah, pretty much that's pretty much it in a nutshell. It can also take a Cult Vox Caster, which make, you can reroll morale tests if this unit contains a, a model of the Cult Vox Caster. Um, that's them. So as for troops, you have three choices. Uh, two of them, you know, one of them can go, go into a uh, a Chimera. One can go into the the other vehicle that they have, um, which is the Goliath truck. And then the other one's kind of on their own, but uh, choices. And as I said, they're all kind of squishy. You're going to sit on objectives, stay in cover, keep them protected. You know, with their five-up saves, their toughness three. They're guardsmen. They'll die pretty quickly. That's okay. They'll shoot some stuff. Try to take something down with you. If you can take down an enemy model um, for every model you lose, that's good. Plus, they're pretty cheap, so you can spam them. If you want to run, you know, like a, a detachment with tons of command points, that'd be good. Up next, we have the Elite Section. Now, the Elite Section did get a bunch of new solo characters for the Elite Section. We'll go over all them in a moment. Yes, yeah, tons of new ones. So there's tons of choices now in the Elite Section. Up next, uh, first, we have the Hybrid Metamorphs. Now, the Hybrid Metamorphs are 9 points plus War Gear. Uh, Satline, Movement 6 inches, Strength... Sorry, weapon skill 3 up, ballistic skill 4 up, strength 4, toughness 3, 1 wound, 3 attacks, leadership 7, 5 up save. It contain, a squad contains 4 hybrid metamorphs and 1 metamorph leader. You can include up to 5 more. Uh, each model is armed with an auto pistol, rending claw, metamorph talon, and blasting charges. A metamorph talon is, strength, is a melee weapon, strength user, AP, nothing, D1, but each time the bear fights, it can make one additional attack with this weapon. Add 1 to hit rolls for attacks made with this weapon. Cool. They have Cult Ambush, Unquestioning Loyalty, Cult Icon, once again, and uh, that's basically it in a nutshell. There's kind of an elite unit. Out of all the elites, they're not really my favorite. They're cool. But up next is my favorite elite unit, the Aberrants. Now, the Aberrants are like these big, hulking, gene steel cult guys, and they're really cool, especially combined with the Abominant. And uh, as I mentioned, they're movement six inches. Oh, sorry, the Aberrants are 16 points a model plus war gear. Movement 6 inches, weapon skill 3 up, ballistic skill 6 up, strength 5, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7, 5 up save. Um, it can two, includes 5 aberrants. It can include up to 5 additional aberrants. For every 5 models in this unit, 1 aberrant hypermorph can take can, can take the place of 1 aberrant. With a hypermorph, uh, just gets an extra attack. Yep, pretty much an extra attack. Each aberrant is armed with a rending claw and either a heavy power hammer or power pick. Each aberrant hypermorph is armed with a rending claw, hypermorph tail, and either a heavy power hammer or an improvised, or sorry, heavy improvised weapon. And each one has a different stat line. So heavy improvised weapon is strength times two, AP minus one, D2, but make two hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon. A power hammer is strength times two, AP minus three, D3. When attacking this weapon, you must subtract one from the hit roll. A hypermorph tail is each other bear fights, it can make one additional attack with this weapon. AP, uh, strength user AP minus one, D1. Power pick, strength user AP minus two, D, D3. Each time, models, each time a model with a rending claw makes an attack with this weapon, it can make one additional attack with its rending claw. And a rending claw, strength user AP minus one, D1. But if you roll six up, the uh, it's resulted AP minus four. They have a call to ambush and questioning loyalty, and once again, bestial vigor. So this work, works really well with um, with the um, banner. But uh, when inflicting damage on this model uh, model in this unit, you subtract one from the damage, and it has a five up build no pain. Up next, we have the pure strain gene stealers. Pure strain gene stealers are still more expensive than normal gene stealers. They're fifteen points a model, I believe. Yes, 15 points a model. They do get the cool cult ambush abilities. Um, they don't have the synergy with like the Swarm Lord, but that's still pretty cool. Um, they're gene stealers, right? Movement eight inches, weapon skill three up, strength four, toughness four, one wound, three attacks, leadership nine, five up, invulnerable save, versus the other ones with just a five up save. They have rending claws, and they have cult ambush and questioning loyalty. They can, you add one to attack characteristic if the model contains at least 10 models, in, sorry, if the squad contains at least 10 models, plus one to attack rolls. Lightning Reflexes, they have a 5 one vulnerable save, and Swift and Deadly, they can charge and assault the same turn. So that's cool. 
you know, they have the connection between the Tyranids and this army, and they're very cool. Gene Steelers are still awesome. They'll still rip things to shreds in close combat, and they're still quasi-survivable due to the 5-up in vulnerable save. Up next we have um, four, I'm sorry, five, six, six characters that most of them are new to the army. In fact, I think all of them are new to the army. And they're all new, cool models for. So let's go over the new rules for the new models. Up uh, first, we have the Clam of Us, 55 points plus war gear. It's just armed with an auto pistol. So I think auto pistols are free. Yes, so it is just simply 55 points for Clam of Us. Movement six inches. Weapon skill three up. Let's skill three up. Strength three, toughness three. Four wounds, three attacks, they should be eight, five up save. As called ambush, unquestioning loyalty. Scrambler array. Enemy units that are set up on the battlefield as reinforcements cannot be set up within 12 inches of this model. So this can help protect your guys. You stick them at the front line slightly behind another squad so that they can't shoot them. And then your opponent cannot deep strike within 12 inches of them. So that's huge. Keeps your guys slightly away and prevents them from being assaulted turn one. In addition, at the start of your shooting phase, roll d6 for each enemy unit that is within 6 inches of any Clamavises from your army. On a 6, that enemy unit suffers a mortal wound. And then it also has the Proclamator Hailer. Add 1 to leadership characteristics of cult units while, it's with, while they're within 6 inches of any friendly cult Clamavises. In addition, add 1 to advance and charge rolls made for cult units while they're within 6 inches of any friendly cult Clamavises when the roll is made. Up next, we have the Locus. Now, the Locus is 40 points plus war gear. It has Locus Blades and a Hypermorph Tail. Locus Blades are 0, Hypermorph Tail, 0. So, yeah, it's just normally 40 points. Cool. Uh, movement 6 inches, Weapon Skill 2 up, List Skill 3 up, Strength 4, Toughness 3, 4 up, 4 wounds, 4 attacks, it should be 8, 5 up, save. Uh, Locust Blades are Strength User, AP-3, D1. Increase the weapon's damage characteristic to 2 if the bearer made a charge move, was charged, or performed a heroic intervention this turn. And Hypermorph Tail, each time the bearer fights, he can make one additional attack with this weapon. Called Ambush, Unquestioned Loyalty. Unquestioned Bodyguard, each time a cult character model, other than a Locust, loses a wound while within 3 inches of any cult Locuses, you can select one of the Locuses to intercept in it, that attack instead of using the Unquestioned Loyalty ability. If you do so, roll a d6 on a 2-up. The character does not lose a wound, but the selected model suffers one moral wound. You cannot then use the Unquestioning Loyalty ability to avoid this. On a 1, the original model uh, loses the wound as normal. It also has Neurotrommel Rod. Subtract 1 from leadership characteristics of any units that are within 6 inches of this model. Sudden Strike in the charge phase. If this model is within 6 inches of any enemy units, after your opponent has completed all of their charge moves, it can perform a heroic intervention. This model can move up to six inches when performing heroic interventions and can choose to move toward the nearest enemy character within six inches rather than the nearest enemy model. Uh, has a five up and vulnerable save and quick silver strike. This model always fights first in the fight phase, even if it did not charge. If an enemy has the same thing, take turns. So really cool model. Locus is a really cool character the elite choices of this army. I really like it. Up next we have the Sanctus. 55 points, 6 inch movement, 2 up weapon skill, 2 up ballistic skill, strength 3, toughness 3, 4 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8, 5 up save. Uh, it's armed with a silencer sniper rifle. Uh, it's guided by soul fight, soul light familiar, which attacks using the familiar claws. So it has a familiar buddy that runs with it. Cool. Uh, its weapon is 36 in range, heavy 1, strength 4, AP minus 1, DD3, it's a sniper rifle. Except, if a Psyker loses any wounds as a result of an attack with this weapon, it suffers perils of the warp after the attack has been resolved. Cold Ambush, Unquestioning Loyalty, Cold Assassin, this model can never have a warlord trait. In addition, the perfect, the eight, a perfect ambush stratagem has a command point cost of 0, which is being used to affect this model. Let me see a perfect ambush stratagem. Just to make sure that it's the correct one I was thinking of. Uh, perfect ambush. Which is usually 3 CP. Uh, use the stratagem in the movement phase immediately after you set up an infantry or biker unit from your army that has a, a cult ambush ability on the battlefield. That unit can either move D6 inches, 
even if it has arrived from your reinforcements, or it can shoot with all of its ranged weapons as if it were the shooting phase. Using the stratagem in your own turn does not prevent that unit from shooting in your shooting phase or making a charge move in the charge phase. That's huge. So you can shoot him twice for free. That's cool. Um, Camel Cloak, add two to saving throws while he's in benefit of cover instead of one. Soul, uh, soul I Familiar, units do not receive the benefit of cover to their saving throws for attacks made by this weapon. By the Soul I Familiar. Cool. That's kind of cool. So you can shoot things, ignore cover, kill them, shoot them twice. Awesome. Up next we have the Keeler Morph. Now the Keeler Morph is the new model from the new um, Kill Team box set. And it is... 60 points. It's movement 6 inches, 3 up weapon skill, 2 up ballistic skill, strength 3, toughness 3, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, there should 8, 5 up save. It has a 3 liberator auto, su auto stubs, which are pistols, and a cultist knife. The 3 uh, the three pistols are pistol 2, 12 inch range, strength 4, AP minus 1, D2, you can kill stuff. And a cultist knife, which doesn't do much. Called uh, Ambush, Unquestioning Loyalty. Gunslinger, this model can target enemy characters, even if they are not the closest enemy unit. In addition, each time the model hits an enemy with a pistol weapon, it can only make one additional hit roll against the target unit using the same weapon. Cool. These bonus hits cannot themselves generate more. So you get six shots, and every time it's a hit, which is on a two up, it generates an additional attack. Cool. That will kill some guys quickly. Yeah, it's G2. So it'll kill a bunch of, you know, Primaris Marines. Heroic Deeds, Heroic Inspiration. If this model kills an enemy model with its rank, sorry, if this model kills any enemy model with its ranged weapons, then until the end of the phase, reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly cult infantry units that are within six inches of this model, and has a five up and vulnerable save. Nexos. A Nexos is a cool new one guy too. He's 50 points, plus war gear. Yeah, it's 50 points. He just has an auto pistol. Um, has a movement 6 inches, weapon skill 3 up, ballistic skill 3 up, strength 3, toughness 3, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, there should be 8, 5 up save. Uh, cult ambush, unquestioning loyalty, strategic coordinator. So this is the guy on, in front of the, uh, like the cool station, that, that model. After this model has been set up on the battlefield, you can select one of your ambush markers that is on the battlefield and remove it before setting it up again anywhere that is wholly within your deployment zone and more than 12 inches away from any enemy model. So it allows you to redeploy one squad if you want to, once again, bringing some more tactical precision to your army. In addition, if your army is battleforged, roll 1d6 each time either player spends a command point to use a stratagem while any nexuses from your army are on the battlefield. If it was a command point you spent, and there's at least one cult primar primus and one cult nexos from your army on the battlefield, add one to the result. If it was a command point that your opponent spent and there's at least one cult clamavus and one cult nexos from your army on the battlefield, add one to the result. In either case, if the result is six up, you gain a command point. So it helps you command point harvest. Cool. Up next we have the biophagus. Phagus. Biophagus? Biophagus? I don't know, Biophages, I'll say. Um, Biophages is, let's see, 35 points. Um, it's movement 6 inches, weapon skill 3 up, let's skill 3 up, strength 3, toughness 3, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, there's a bait, 5 up save. It has uh, an auto pistol and the injector Goad, or Goad. It can be accompanied by an alchemist familiar. The Injector Goad is Strength plus 1, AP nothing, D, D3, melee attack, and it wounds on a 2 plus targeting a vehicle or titanic unit. If a character loses any wounds as a result of this attack or this weapon, roll D6 at, for, for it after all the bear's attacks have been resolved. If the result is higher than that model's wounds characteristic, it suffers D3 mortal wounds. So that's cool. Help kill things. Cult Ambush, Unquestioning Loyalty. So Genomic, genomic Enhancement. This is, it's the, um... Uh, Nord, not Nord Crown, it's the, uh, Gene Stars have, uh, sorry, not, it used to be the, um, the Umgarl Gene Stealers used to have this rule. So, genomic enhancement, this model can enhance one friendly cult aberrant unit that is within one inch of it at the end of your movement phases. Roll D6 on a one, one model from the selected unit is slain, then roll a D3 and refer to the table below, and we'll see what bonuses the survivors get. 
A unit can only be the target of this ability once per battle. So I guess it's permanent. Cool. Uh, so on a 1, enhance musculature, plus 1 strength. On a 2, plus 1 toughness. On a 3, plus 1 attacks. Alchemius, Alchemicus, familiar. If a biophage is accompanied by an alchemist, Alchemicus familiar, then once per game, when the biophagus uses genomic enhancement ability, its, alchem its alchemist familiar can aid it. If, just, if you do so, roll two d3s and choose which one applies. Cool. Awesome. So that's the elites. So there's gonna be tons of new characters. I keep kicking my camera, that's okay. Uh, tons of new characters that can help buffer your guys. And once again, a lot of tactical flexibility, but you really have to use these dudes in opportune times and to enhance your army and help you win, right? They're not point and click guys. You really have to bring some strategy when using them, most of them, as we discussed. Up next, we have the fast attacks. Now, the fast attacks actually are kind of heavy hitting units. There's uh, four units to choose from, and they're really cool. As I said, they're pretty heavy hitting. They have access to cool war gear, and um, they're fast, so that's cool. Excuse me. Up first, we have one of the cool new vehicles for the army, the Achilles Ridge Runners. Achilles Ridge Runners are, um, they are 50 points plus war gear, and uh, they have 14 inch movement, strength six, toughness four, uh, sorry, what? 14 inch movement, weapon skill six up, ballistic skill four up, Strain 5, toughness 5, 8 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 7, 4 up save. This unit contains 1 Achilles Ridge Runner. You include up to 1 additional one or 2 additional ones. Each model is equipped with 2 heavy stubbers, a heavy mining laser. And heavy mining laser is probably one of my favorite guns for hitting stuff with this army because it's 36 inch range, heavy D3, strength 9, AP minus 3, D6 damage. So DD6 damage, sorry, DD6, right? Damage. Um. That's pretty crazy. Crazy. I like it. I love it. That's what I, I take. Um, and a flare launcher, which has a rule. Basically, um, if a model is equipped with a flare launcher, roll D60, time to lose a wound. On a six, that wound is not lost. In addition, once per battle, at the start of your movement phase, you can select one friendly cult biker unit within six inches of this model. That unit moves an additional six inches. If it advances, this phase, no, no additional, sorry, no dice rolls necessary. Yeah. Uh, it can explode. It's a scout vehicle. So at the beginning, at the start of the first battle round, but before the first turn begins, you can move this unit up to nine inches. It cannot end its move in the nine inches of an enemy model. If both players have turns, the player who's taken the first turn moves their fir units first. Survey Ogre, you can replace your um, flare launcher with a Survey Ogre or a spotter. Survey Ogre is units do not receive the benefit of cover to the saving throws for attacks made by this model. I actually like that idea because they can hit things and they don't get cover and you can kill them, right? That's a heavy D3 shots. Cool stuff. And a spotter. If a model has a spotter, increase the range characters of ranged weapons by 6 inches of 42 inch range. Also pretty nice. I think both of them are better than the flare and myself. So that's the Achilles Ridge Runner. As I said, it's really a cool weapon. You can take a heavy mortar instead uh, heavy Mortar is heavy D6, 48 inch range, strength uh, 5, AP minus 1, D1, but can target models that are not visible to the bearer like a Mortar can. And next we have the Italian Jackals, the new bike units. They are so cool. The Italian Jackals are a really cool new uh, vehicle. They're new bikes, so they're 14 inch movement, strength, uh, weapon skill 4 up, ballistic skill 4 up, strength 3, toughness 4. Two wounds, one attack, leadership seven, five up save. They have a leader that has an extra attack and leadership. Um, you can include up to four additional ones or eight additional ones. For every four Italian jackals and or Italian leaders in the unit, it can include one Italian a wolf quad, which is a, which is a sense it's an ATV, um, which has an extra two wounds and the same stat line as the normal jackal. Uh, each wolf quad is, is also equipped with a heavy stubber. Cool. Uh, it doesn't actually say what they're... Oh, an auto pistol and blasting charges. Cool. They have called ambush, unquestioning loyalty, and skill that where subtract one to hit rolls for attacks the target unit with a shooting phase. And again, you can uh, you can upgrade some weapons, like a mining laser. Um, you can give one of them a mining laser, which is the strength 9, AP minus 3, DD6, heavy 1. Helps keep them alive. 
So, and uh, any wolf quad can replace a heavy stubber with a mining laser or a talon incinerator. A talon incinerator is 12 inch range, heavy D6, strength 5, AP minus 1, D1, automatically hits because it's a, a flamer. So, tons of variation there. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. I'm excited. That's very cool. Very, very cool. Cool new models. Then up next, we have the two Sentinels from the previous edition. Uh, the Cult Armored Sentinel. Oh, by the way, the, um, the Talon Jackals are 10 points each plus war gear. A Talon Wolf Quads are 15 points plus war gear. And then the two Sentinels are 30 points each plus war gear. Um, there's the Cult Armored Sentinels or the Cult Scout Sentinels. The Armored Sentinels are movement 8 inches. Weapon skill with skill 4 up, strength 5, toughness 6, 6 wounds, 1 attack, leadership 7, 3 up save. Um, it, you can take up to 2 additional ones and equipped with a multi laser. Multi lasers are silly. I would personally take a LAS cannon if I was these ones. That way you have some heavy shooting in the background, right? Makes sense. You really want to take a LAS cannon just to kill things from a distance. Um, it makes these guys really awesome. They have cult ambush. So once again, you can ambush them if you want, keep them alive. Um, Tyranids, of course, they're gene stealers, they have smoke launchers. It's just a sentinel. And cult, scult, cult scout sentinels, which have the scout vehicle rule. They can move 9 inches before the game begins. They have an extra inch of movement, so 9 inch range. Uh, their strength 5, toughness 5, 6 wounds, you know, same things. You can basically give them the same weapons as the other one. So, a little bit faster, a little bit less tough. Life's good. Up next, we have the Cult Lehman Russ. Now, I don't actually know how much the Astronaut Terum one is. Cult Lehman Russes are... So that's the heavy support. Now we're going to heavy support. 122 points plus war gear. Um, you can't take them in the squadron, unfortunately, like you can with Astronaut Terum. But they do have Cult Ambush, so cool. And you can give them a variety of weapons. Uh, their movement is dependent on their number of wounds. They have up to 12 wounds. And uh, movement 10 inches at best. Plus skill 4 up. 3 attacks, weapon skill 6 up, strength 7, toughness 8, 12 wounds, leadership 7, 3 up save. You can give them a variety of weapons, which are worth a bunch of different points. The most popular are usually a battle cannon, which is heavy, D6, 72 inch range, strength 8, AB minus 2, DD3. So something in the background to pop things from a distance. Or a Nova cannon, 36 inch range, heavy, D6, strength 6, AP minus 2, DD3. But they don't, uh, you can't, they ignore cover. There's a LAS cannon, multi melt you can give them a bunch of different weapons. That's cool. That's called ambush, smoke launchers, emergency plasma vents. So it fires a supercharged plasma cannon, and you roll one or more hit rolls of one. It automatically it is automatically destroyed. It's not automatically destroyed. Sorry. Instead, it suffers d six mortal wounds and cannot fire any plasma cannons for the rest of the battle. I wouldn't take plasma cannons. Grinding advance. If it remains stationary or moves under half speed in its movement phase. Uh, it can shoot its turret weapon twice in the following shooting phase, which is huge, so you can fire it twice. I would fire, I, I love the battle cannon myself. Furthermore, hit rolls for this model's turret do not suffer the penalty for moving and shooting a heavy weapon. The following weapons are turret weapons, battle cannon, eradicator, nova cannon, exterminator, auto cannon, vanguard, or battle cannon. And it can explode. And then we have the Brood Brothers Heavy Weapons Team. This is the heavy weapons squad, you know, that Astronaut Terum has access to. Um, they're a normal squad that is actually, they, they just come base with, you know, a LAS gun and frag grenades, but you can give them, you know, a LAS cannon if you want. You can give them, um, what, what a lot of the, uh, cheesy astronaut Terran players give is the mortars that you can shoot at things that are not in line of sight. And that's it. They're, um, they're six points per model plus war gear. And then finally, the Goliath Rock Grinder. This is the uh, one of the older vehicles that existed when the Codex came out. It is, uh, once again, has 10 wounds, um, weapon skill 4 up, bliss skill 4 up at best, 6 strength, six uh, sorry, 7 toughness, 10 wounds, 6 attacks, leadership 7, 4 up save. It uh, is equipped with heavy stubber, heavy mining laser, and a do drill dozer blade, which is strength melee, sorry, strength plus 3, melee weapon, AP minus 2, DD3. The bearer can make D3 additional attacks on a turn in which it charged. So 6 attacks plus D3 attacks, strength 9, AP minus 2, D3, it'll really kill stuff. It can take a cache of demolition charges, which are a bunch of grenades. 
Uh, called ambush, rugged construction, roll a d6 each time this model loses a wound. On a 6, the wound is not lost, and it can explode. It can take up to 6 cult infantry models. Each patriarch takes up the space of 5 other models. <laughs> so you can put a patriarch in it and just run with it, basically. Cool. And it's a uh, 10-inch movement, so it's pretty fast. And that's it. That's the heavy support choices. And now let's get to the, the uh, two dedicated transports, Goliath Truck and Chimera. They're the same as before, basically. A Goliath Truck, I think it went down in cost, I could be wrong, is 50 points plus war gear. Chimera, 60 points plus war gear. Goliath Truck, um, 10 wounds automatically, it can move up to 12 inches. Weapon skill 6 up, plus skill 4 up. Strength 6, toughness 6, 10 wounds, 3 attacks at full strength, at full health. Leadership 7, 4 up save. It comes with a heavy stubborn twin auto cannon, so heavy four, 48 inch range, strength seven, AP minus one, two damage. Uh, has rugged construction and it's open topped, so that obviously models inside can can fire as normal. Uh, it can include up to 10, view, 10 models, and each patriarch takes up the space of five models. And then occult chimera, uh, movement 12 inches at full strength, which is 10 wounds. Uh, weapon skill 6 up, plus skill 4 up at full strength, strength 6, toughness 7, 10 wounds, leadership 7, 3 up save. It has a multi-laser, heavy bolter, and two las gun arrays, and you can, you know, give it a heavy flamer or a heavy bolter, hunter killer missiles, uh, and upgrade its weapons. Cool. It includes 12 Brood Brothers infantry, so only the Brood Brothers can go into it. And each Brood Brother weapons team takes up the space of two other models. If during deployment this unit is set up in ambush using the cult ambush ability, only units with the cult ambush ability can be embarked inside it when it is set up. Cool. And then next we have the Tectonic Frag Drill, which is the fortification. I don't think it's going to be used much, but it's cool-ish. Um, tectonic Frag Drill is 75 points. Um, and it's set up during deployment, and once set up, it's stationary. Only infantry, beast swarms, and the units that can fly can end their phase on top of the upper floors. You have to use ladders to get up and down if you're not flying. Underground ingress, once per turn, in their movement phase, one infantry or biker unit that is the cult ambush ability can move off the battlefield if all its models are on the ground level and can move within one inch of this model. If a unit does this, remove the selected model from the battlefield at the end of the, your next movement phase. Set up that unit anywhere on the battlefield that's more than 9 inches away from any enemy models. If the battlefield ends before this unit is set back up, it is destroyed. Cool, so it can essentially deep strike next turn. Activate the drill. If a model from your army is on the tectonic fray drill at the end of your movement phase and there are no enemy models on it, you can activate the drill. If you do, first roll a d6 for every enemy, sorry, for every unit on the ground level that is within 3 inches of the tip of this model's drill. On a six, that unit immediately suffers D6 mortal wounds. This is unit, doesn't say, oh sorry, yeah, it doesn't say enemy unit, so you can hurt yourself. Then roll D6, adding one to the result for each time the drill on this model has been activated during this turn. If the total is less than six, the seismic tremors result below takes effect. On a six plus, the seismic tremors and seismic quake results below take effect. Okay, the seismic quake. Results can only take effect once per battle, regardless of how many tectonic frag drills are on the battlefield. So seismic tremors, until the start of your next movement phase, subtract two from charge rolls made for units while they're within 12 inches of this model. This does not apply to units that can fly and the effects of multiple seismic tremors are not cumulative. Seismic quake, draw a straight line imaginary, draw an imaginary straight line, one millimeter in thickness from any point on the battlefield edge to any point of another battlefield edge in such a way that it crosses this model. Roll d6 for every unit this line crosses that is on the ground level. Do not roll for units that can fly. On a 4-up, that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. And it's move characteristics half until the end of the next movement phase. Alright, maybe it could be taken. That's kind of cool. For 75 points, it's very circumstantial. It can do a lot of damage. And that's it. Those are all the squads. We're an hour into this video, so we gotta keep going. Um, those are all the units. I really think, um, yeah, we did a lot of, of talking so far. So what do I think overall of these models? Um, the HQs are cool, kind of squishy, but um, they can really hit hard or shoot well. The troops are really squishy, but they're just there. Like they're you just take masses of them and swarm the battlefield and your opponent has to kill all of them, you know? 
The elites are really awesome in this codex, and the fast attack actually have access to some really nice guns that can be really cool, and they have some board choices as well. My favorite unit is the Aberrants. I think I love them. They just have such a cool look to them, and they're hard-hitting close combat. I love the new rules with Cult Ambush, and um, as I said, the heavy supports can really, really shoot well. The fast attacks actually have access to some great weaponry to shoot from too. The elites and the, tr uh, the elites are pretty much close combat-y. Uh, most of them are, are close combat oriented. The troops really are just weak, but that's okay. Um, and the HQs can hit R2. And obviously, gene stirs are amazing as well. All right? The rules you can split with them too. You know, um, they can help as well. So, what are your favorite units? Leave comments in the comment section down below what you think about this codex. Um, I'm probably going to stop here. I'm going to go over the... Uh, I'm, I'm, my voice is getting pretty sore. It is thir uh, Thursday night, and I'll make another video with Warlord traits and the other things that I've gone through. But my, let's end here. So what are your thoughts on the new um, codex of the Gene Stir Cults army? What do you think? I really like it. As I said, it's not a simple point-and-click army. It can be competitive. I think there's going to be some really competitive builds in here, but they will take some tactical precision. It will be a general's army. You know, you have to run this army with precision and with some, some strategy, and you have to really know what your opponent does. Your opponent, you have to pretty much figure out your opponent's strategy, and you have to really know your army. Because with this new ambush rule, you really have to counterbalance uh, your opponent really well, so you have to counter-deploy them. Um, and you got to figure out what they want to do because you got to keep your your assault guys alive so they can get into assault and outgun them with your back guys. That's all I'm saying. And all the special rules as well. A lot of the new elite characters, for example, can buff your army in a variety of ways. So you have to use them in, in um, you have to use them in precision with the other squads. Keep thing, you know, plan your attack ahead of time. That's my first impressions of the new uh, Gene Seer Cults army. What do you think? What do you love about the new models? What do you hate about the new models? What do you think? Do you think it's going to be a competitive army? Leave comments in the comment section down below. Let's create a discussion. And as always, um, please like my video, comment in the comment section down below, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. It really does help a lot. And this video is brought to you by my Patreon subscribers. As you can see, their names go by my head. It's because of them that I keep doing these codex reviews. Stay tuned for the next part of this codex review and future codex reviews. Until always, next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.